Nice. There you are. Hey, Simon. <laughs> kind of. Oh, there we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> there it is. Man of the hour. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in so long. Look at this beard. Boom. <laughs> You, I kind of went on the feral side this summer. <laughs> you can that in the winter because they typically think that like facial hair is hot in the summer. <laughs> but you look great. All right, thank you, and you too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> awesome. I was just saying on here, it's starting to get dark like outside, and it's pretty shaded at my house, so I feel like it's darker on the screen. But you look great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I move the camera a bit too. Yeah, go for it. Do what you need to. I'm stoked to get this started. And so, really fast before we get started, Simon, because we have some questions for you, and we have some people kind of jumping on and joining. But introduce yourself. Tell people who you are. If they don't know who you are already, you're like a Sedona legend. And I was saying earlier that, like you always say, that you're the first mountain biker in Sedona. So tell us a little about, about A, how long you've been riding, who you are, that kind of stuff. Okay, well I am 58 um, and I've been riding my, excuse me, I've been drinking a beer too, so excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a dog wanting to be pet right now, so um, anyway, so anyways, yeah, so I am actually Simon Bosman and I'm originally from Africa and uh, I've been riding my whole life, I'm 58 um, and uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I arrived in Sedona in the early 80s, and, um, yeah, there was no one else riding. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so I rode for a few years on my own, and, um, yeah, I, <laughs> it's kind of funny. That some of the stuff I, I took my bike on way back then, like up Wilson Mountain and uh, um, uh, um, um, at the West Fork, yeah. At the Open Canyon, I've been from top to bottom, uh, which is against the law now. It I, wasn't, I guess it was back then, but there weren't signs and I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. So I've I been all over the place. Yeah. That's crazy. So like back then, I mean, there were, there were no trails. You were just kind of bushwhacking, right? Well, there, there actually were a few trails. There were some of the more, um, there, um, there was like, um, what, I'm just trying to think. Uh, I think Llama Trail was already there, Yeah. for example. Um, obviously the Broken Arrow area, but the Broken Arrow Trail itself wasn't done. Um, uh, there was some stuff out of Coxcomb too. Um, all the wilderness trails were in place and, and I rode all of them back then, so. <laughs> nice, awesome. But as I was saying, it wasn't against the law then. Well, it kind of was, but not really. <laughs> now you can <talk> stuff. <laughs> Especially like up Wilson. I mean. Yeah, up, up and over Wilson. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> that sounds crazy. I don't even know if I would, if I would want to ride that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I actually hiker biked it up and rode, rode it down. So whatever, it was good. Just fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been. So I mean, how how long have you been riding? How long have I been mountain biking? Yeah. Actual mountain biking on a mountain bike. Um, first time I rode was in the early '80s, like '83, something like that. Yeah. yeah. On a mountain bike. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, long time ago. <laughs> and, it was, and and the bike was rad. It was so cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just like what you're riding now right <laughs> yeah exactly it's kind of crazy how that that happens um i mentioned that 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 one day that uh we all rode up on uh, up on the high line yeah how like each bike i've ever had is, is like the best bike i've ever had or you know what i'm saying it's yeah. like so so stoked to get it and it's like whoa it can't get any better and then next year it's better yeah <laughs> So, what bike are you riding right now? What? Because I know you have a couple, but what bike do you take? Yeah, I've been I've been on a program with a, a friend of mine from Flag, who is a Niner dealer, and I've been riding the Rip Nine for about the last year, which is a fantastic bike. Nice. Um, but uh, I'm in between bikes right now. I had to give my last one back a week ago, so I'm uh, back on my HD4 Ibis, nice. which I, which I really love that bike tremendously. It's a great it's a great bike. Yeah, great. You've had yeah. a while. 
Yeah, I've had it a couple of years now. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. That's great. It's good. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. I love it. So, okay, so let's just get kind of right into this. And the first, the first thing we're going to chat about is three tips that you would give for riding steeper descents because – Let's be real. When people see you in videos, and most of the time you're riding like this super steep slick rock, or I mean, what you were in? Where were you this past weekend? Because you posted a photo. I was in Page, yeah. Page. Page. Okay. We went up for a little photo shoot this weekend. We were actually scouting out for a, an upcoming shoot in October. Nice. And uh, yeah, so, and yeah, I've, I've actually got another really good one coming up in a couple of weeks, but I'll I'll have to wait for that. Nice. But. Uh, <laughs> Well, but um, I always feel like you're riding this steep stuff. Like you're always every. I mean, even when we ride together, remember last time we did I was talking about you went down this super steep, crazy thing, and I was like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I was like, I'm yeah, not. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of funny. I've always been drawn to that, uh, the steeper stuff, and I guess I just figured it out by trial and error how to do it and yeah. I'm pretty comfortable riding really steep stuff now so the three tips that I would suggest are prob probably the probably the best is is learning how to use your brakes properly yeah. um, and your front brake okay. you know properly feathering the brake I think a lot of people um, are misunderstood they basically misunderstand what feathering feathering the brakes is a lot of people think feathering is is basically pulsating the brakes and it's absolutely not it's slowing the wheel down, so with still, still, actually, still actually having traction, so you don't want to skid. So, um, so, um, so feathering the brakes, you know, learning how to use your front brake and feathering the brakes, uh, braking through your feet, mm -hmm. okay, rather than through your arms, because a lot of people do that. You want the braking force to drive through your feet. Um, so that's 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 dropping your center of gravity, and then probably the third and probably the most important of all is is knowing where the middle of the bike is gotcha because too often people think when they go down they got to get back but uh, but in reality you, you're trying to stay in the middle still you, even though you're going back as the bike goes down you've got to get back to stay in the middle of 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 your your two traction points so uh, starting to learn how it feels to be in the middle of the bike and it, it you know riding from the center of the bike always nice. are probably my two Oh, sorry, three three um, most important tips, I would say. Yeah, I those are that's awesome. I I knew that you were gonna say braking because that is <laughs> I'm like, like that day that I saw you ride that super steep section over where Chuck Wagon is. That, oh yeah, <laughs> that was insane. I was just like, okay, I can't believe he's gonna go down this because it was like a drop in this like super steep section of slick rock, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> All right, here it goes. So yeah, braking and in body position. That's and and the can you can you kind of go in a little bit further on what you mean by braking with your feet? Yeah. So I, I um I guess how I explain it to people when when I'm coaching them is is the same feeling you would get if you were in a tug of war. Okay. So you you're I mean you're you're using your feet to stop yourself from going forward. If that makes sense. Yeah. So. Like, uh, here, here, yeah. Right? Yeah. So really driving your feet, your braking force into the ground through your feet, rather than behind your handlebars, and that's dropping your center of mass. So the more you brake behind the handlebars, the more likely you are to go over the handlebars. Gotcha. So yeah, and and, and then having a consistent braking. So, uh, so you don't want your wheels to basically be jerking like that each time you're pulsating. You want them to rotate. Gradually, you know, without a um, any, any jerk in them. Yeah. Laying down. I mean, I, I'd say a lot of people go over the bars by just yeah. grabbing a handful all the time. Right? Yeah. Yeah. What happens when you when when you you, you um, grab the brakes and let them go? Brag, you know, by pulsating your brakes is your center of mass, which is which which is I I, I kind of like to think of it as a as, as a bowling ball right where your belly button is inside there yeah every time you break and and you know uh, they let go of the brakes you're doing this so your center of mass is jerking you want that to be as constant as possible you want that no matter what what the ground is doing steps and whatnot you want everything you want that to be graceful your center of mass you don't want that bouncing around as soon as it, as soon as it starts bouncing you you're 
you're heading for trouble. Yeah. Like you need you need to be smooth. Yeah, and and there's one other thing I, I would add is like you need to be smooth. Focus on riding smooth rather than riding fast. Yeah. The smoother you get, the sm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say that's such a good tip. I, yeah. I always hear that from other coaches too, but I remember hearing that when we coached together is that you were saying that like slowing your riding down is huge, right? And try not to go super, super fast because concentrating on being smooth is, is way important. Yeah, slow is. I'm slowing down to ultimately ride faster. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see it so many times. People charging and they wicked fast for a little bit, then they wad it. You know, yeah. or blow out a corner or something like that. You want like yeah. slow and steady. You you, you want to be graceful, nice. smooth. Yeah. That's awesome. That's anyway. Awesome. I love those three tips. Okay, so really fast, you're gonna get into some a couple of question Q and A's here. And um, I don't know if you can see that on the screen, but I can. Yeah. yeah. Steph had asked, "What was the most impactful piece of mountain bike advice or tip you've ever received?" And I'll just kind of let you think about that for a second. Yeah. Well. Um. That's a I. Big yeah, that's a pretty tough one. You know, I I would say I I'm 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 uh, I I I. Um, I I got certified as a coach by Shams March, and I respect that guy's riding oh. immeasurably. One of the one of the best riders I've ever met in my life. He's such a nice guy, and and he he was the one that that showed me and and told me the importance of riding from the middle of the bike. Everything happens from the middle of the bike, and you need to figure out where that is, and and how how you know when you are in the middle of the bike is when you are standing on your pedals and <clears throat> and you're able to tell whether you are in the middle by how your hands feel on your handlebars or uh, you know if you're not squeezing the bars too tight the grips too tight one can tell whether you there's a slight tug or a slight push or if you're neutral mm -hmm. now that you always need to ride from neutral not always in neutral but ride from neutral because you're obviously going to push the bike forward and pull it back and whatnot, but always ride from, always come back to neutral again. So that I would say is probably the number one one tip that I heard that that really impacted me tremendously. I've been right, and but, but when I when I when I got taught to coach by Shams, I mean, I literally, I think I'd been riding mountain bikes for over 30 years at the time, and I was like, whoa! It suddenly was, it was really like a light came on. Yeah. It's amazing. So yeah, awesome, yeah. awesome tip. Man, Shams is such an amazing rider. He's Isn't he? yeah. I've had the chance to meet with him, and he's such a cool guy. What a cool program that they have too. I love yeah. it. That's awesome. Um, when did you? How long have you had your cert? When did you get certified through him? Well, I was actually. <laughs> it's going to sound funny, but I was the. Um, Shams contacted me, and uh, it's probably like. I don't even know, it's probably seven or eight years ago now, something like that, and said he was wanting to, he was working with Ember and he's going to set something up and he's going to start coaching, and so I was in his first class. That's awesome. Which is kind of strange. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. It's kind of cool though. <laughs> that's so cool. I, um, that's really, that's really funny. So it's, I met Shams at Snowshoe, and he yeah. was there to teach that program. That's, that's so cool. Uh, all right. Yeah. Next question. Um, okay, so I knew this would I knew this would come up because you're pretty. I'm, I'm now saying you're pretty famous for like riding the white line, and so people always ask this. And this was another question that I got. And um, what? When was the first time that you rode the white line? And the second part of this is what is going through your mind when you're riding that trail? Trail. <laughs> yeah. Well. The first time I rode it, I rode with a, a buddy of mine from Plague, who was actually one of the first people to ride it. His name is George Langdon, okay. and uh, he, he encouraged me to come out with him and check it out. Uh, and that was a, probably, I'm guessing, time has a way of blending, blurring, <laughs> but uh, I would guess it was about 15 years ago. Wow. 
Yeah, and I've and I've tried I try to do it pretty regularly because um, yeah, I just well w what happens is I have friends come through town or clients or whatever, and they they ask me to ride it, ride ride the white or show them or whatever. Yeah. So I, I, I ride it pretty free. I usually ride it a couple times a month, two or three times a month, pretty regularly. Oh, what's going through my mind? Well, that's changed. Okay. It's changed from like abject freaking terror initially. Because the first time I rode, I was I was riding in clipless pedals, oh. and uh, you know that when you're like three quarters of the way out, and the rock has a little trans kind of a how can I even describe it? a little kind of a transfer? Yeah. It's kind of a weird angle, a little crack thing with a weird angle. Yeah. And I went out there and I got stuck over there. And I'm in my freaking dancing shoes, cleated shoes, and I was like, shit! I put my foot down, and I was like, ah, ah, ah. looking down the cliff. I'm I'm screwed. I'm so screwed. Because I, I couldn't get off the bike because I thought I'd just start sliding down the rock face. So I had to suck it up. I, I sat there for a couple of minutes, pulsating. You know, I'm not sure if you've ever rock climbed where you get the sewing yeah. machine leg. Yeah. Well, I was getting the sewing machine leg on the cliff face thinking, I'm so screwed. This. Why did I do this? But then I, I, I ended up ended up doing it and and it it, it got easier. Every I never did it with clipless pedals again. Okay. Don't ever do it with clipless pedals. Yeah. Ever. But I'll tell you a story that happened about uh, four months ago. I, 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 was, I was on a brand new bike, first ride, and I was riding with a bunch of bunch of tourists that came to town and wanted to ride with me. So yeah. we they wanted to go check out the white line. So we went out there and whatever. I I, I didn't know where I was going to ride it on what what not. And uh, we were riding out there, and, as I said, brand new bike. Yeah. And I um, I noticed my my front brakes were chirping, kind of. A, and I was like, shit, I don't know if I want to ride the white line with that. So I stopped under the HT bridge. There was a bit of water there. I threw it on my, my, my front uh, disc, um, my front rotor, and uh, put some silt on there, kind of spun the wheel, and it seemed to improve it. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So we rode, obviously, from HT bridge up to Chicken Point. There's not much downhill. Yeah. So I didn't really get to test it, but it seemed like it was working. So we got there, and they, they asked me if I was going to ride it. And I said, yeah, sure. So I rode up and uh, and um, yeah, and I was riding out. I made the turn down, mm. and my front brake just went. Aah! No front brake. Oh. No front brake. <laughs> oh my! So I, it was terrifying. It was ter. I honestly thought I was going to die that day. What? And I, yeah, I nearly died. Yeah, I I, I made it. I made it, but I was going twice as fast as I normally go. I actually had to tripod it and slide at the bottom, yeah, to make that corner. I and I didn't tell. I didn't tell any. I didn't even tell the people that were watching. Yeah. They just thought that's how it's written, and I rode out and I was like, oh shit, that was close. <laughs> I had the shakes and everything, and uh, I was like, man, I I I got kind of cocky, you, you know, because I'm I'm pretty confident with it. Pretty, I've done it so many times. Yeah. That I, that I thought nothing would ever go wrong. Pretty easy. Well, something went wrong. And then about a, a month after, I didn't, I didn't tell anybody, as I said. And um, I just had to suck it up and I, I dealt with the brake issue. And, yeah. And um, about a, a month after that, um, Juanita asked me if, if I would do the white line with, with our dog Poe, with the, Go, with the uh, 360 GoPro. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. I got to go back and do it again because I didn't tell her. So I went out there and um, and I, I was I was I was terrified going again after that because I was like, man, what happens if something happens again? <laughs> and it was like the it was harder than the first time I ever did it because I was what I was planning on doing is do the white line and then then take the white line plus line yeah. down at the bottom, yeah, which I ended up doing, but uh, God, I was terrified. I had I, man. But I made it. It was good. I made it, and I felt like I got back on the horse again. So yeah, yeah. It was I, good. I don't. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely there has to be some kind of like mental. I don't know, because because like you said, you know, you could have you could have almost died. Like you could have messed up, and there's always that risk of, of the biggest thing through people's head is like, okay, what if I fall, right? Yeah. I mean, are you are you thinking about that too? Or are you like? Are, are, you know, honest. Honestly, it's never crossed my mind. Like I'm, I don't, I, I really don't ever do anything that I think is going to kill me. Okay. I don't, in, in um, anymore. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in my younger days, I would do some pretty stupid shit on my dirt bike or whatever. But yeah. but um, no, as, as a general rule, I'm pretty pretty cautious. I, I know, I'm always try to be within my 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 what I feel I, I know I can do. I I don't want to get hurt. Yeah, yeah, of course. But that was a close one. And you want to be able to ride your bike the next day, right? Like, you know, just like screw yeah. up to where you would be injured or get hurt or not be able to ride your bike for sure. I, yeah, I've had enough injuries. So I was just talking to a friend the other day. It's like, I, I think I'm done injuring myself, man. I don't need that shit anymore. Yeah. <laughs> God, God, I bust There's, myself up. That kind of brings me to the next thing, though, is like, this kind of goes with the question. Is there anything that you shy away from now? Are you like, do you love riding like, like drops or, you know, like steep stuff is kind of like your thing, but what's like your favorite kind of, you know, favorite, favorite thing to ride? I, I don't know in like Sedona, but it could be anywhere. My favorite style of riding is more like super trialsy technical stuff, super slow. Yeah. Very challenging. Trying to, I, I call it the slow flow. Yeah. If that makes sense. It's yeah. like I, I'd like to, uh, yeah, a lot of, uh, I find slower riding is, 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 uh, takes more skill. So I, I kind of gravitate towards that because I'm constantly learning uh, when I'm doing that. Just riding, I'm not really learning anything. So I, I get kind of bored. But I like, I like, especially if I don't have very much time, I'll go out and bang out an hour of real technical stuff. Go do like chapel trail yeah. out and back or something like that, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like slow technical, but I, I like I obviously like steep stuff. That's kind of been my forte. I was a downhill racer for a long time, so yeah, I like downhill. I'm honestly, the, I've gotten lost in right around Christmas. I I took a big digger at that um, at the uh, at the corkscrew on high on the hog. Yeah, I I did that step down and I um i you know i'm not sure if you know where i'm talking about Do you know what i'm talking about yeah that, there's a drop yeah. of it right it works, yeah I, works through it's the really it's really not that it's really not that big of a deal in, unless it doesn't go right and then it's a big deal and uh i i i yeah i really hurt myself really hurt myself i'm glad that you're yeah. i i i remember when that happened that's kind yeah. of what well, it wasn't good. It really taught me a good lesson there because I actually wasn't feeling it on that day. Yeah. I was kind of like, yeah, but there were a bunch of people and they all wanted me to do it. And I was like, I just kind of like, oh, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And uh, be like, nah, mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Hey, um, so Billy just asked a question on here. Um, what are the key skills for mastering the slow flow? Like you said, like techie riding, stuff like that. Um, well, I basically riding slow, slow start, riding slow, riding slow, learning to like pedal against your braking force so for, for, you know, learning how to get stable using your brakes. Yeah. Um, track standing, learn how to track stand, learn how to hop, learn how to hop forward, learn how to hop back, hop sideways, that kind of stuff. And that, that just takes time in the saddle and actually focusing on it. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's really fun. I mean, it's stuff I, you can do in your driveway. Yeah, yeah, and you don't even yeah. need to go on the trail. I think a good example of this is our friend Robbie. Right? Yeah. Robbie's a trials rider. He's super yeah. amazing, and he just hops around on his bike all the time. Yeah, I rode with him this summer a couple of times. I, I, I've yeah. been um, um, Colorado. He hung out with us. Yeah, yeah it's in, so inspiring riding with him. Yeah. Makes He makes... Oh my God! He makes things that look impossible easy. It's crazy. It's awesome. I love it. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I aspire to. I aspire to be half as good a rider as he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I would love the trial skills that he has, but also I would yeah. love just like your track standing skills for sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> track standing. Yeah, <laughs> track standing. But learning how to roll back, like roll backing. Roll, you know, get up to an obstacle, you stall, and you can roll back. Yeah, it's awesome. It's not that hard to learn. You're just using your brakes to 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 kind of load your load your suspension, and you can use that as a rebound to roll back again. Just learning to do all that stuff slowly is awesome. Yeah, and it's it, it's an easy workout. You can do it in your driveway. Yeah, you don't even so, need to go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So last last little question to wrap up here, and if you guys have any more, just go ahead and put them in the comments below. But last question, Simon. Um, what is your favorite trail in Sedona? 
In Sedona. All right. Um, this is a loaded one, I know, because. <laughs> um, I would have to say um, probably Munn's Wagon Trail from the top down all the way. Yeah. Nice. That's, you can get, get some wicked speed on that. Yeah. With it's like chunky. High, chunky with high consequences. It's the fastest piece of trail in Sedona. Absolutely. And if the faster you go, the more the consequences are, but you can go for real fast on that trail. It's great. Yeah, track. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I always think I, there's like baby heads and stuff that pop oh, up in that yeah. trail. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have, you have you really have to look ahead on that trail. Yeah, for sure. And ride, and, and ride really loose. Yeah, it's a good it's a good one. It's you know that's I think that's the oldest trail in town. Really? Yeah. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah, it's actually been around for in excess of a hundred years, Whoa. like well in excess of a hundred years. Whoa! Yeah. I haven't rode yep. that trail in a while. I need to get over there and and ride it soon. It's always fun. Yeah, it's fun. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a real fan of riding up the trail all the way to the top. Yeah, I, I, I'll ride pieces and then I'll jump on the on Schnebly Hill Road and then go up. most of the way typically, and then ride over and come back down. I like that; it's a fun trail. Yeah, it's super fun. Man, I yeah. I wasn't expecting you to say that, but that's awesome because that's a really fun trail. That's that's great. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, we're, I've got a... we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up. Do you have anything else you want to add? Um, how long have you been riding? I, let me see. I have been riding mountain bikes for 10 years now. I started in oh, 2000, really? 2010. Yep. You, you had to have been a, a snowboarder or a ski or something. I was, I was a snowboarder. I lived okay. in a, a little mountain town in West Virginia. So uh, that, that's when I started, which was crazy. And then moving to Sedona like three years ago. I was like, I don't know how to ride this stuff. <laughs> wow, well, you certainly picked it up. You're a badass. You're awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Simon. That means a lot yeah. coming from you. Hey, how can uh, people get a hold of you? I know they can follow you on Instagram. You have your website, Instagram. Simon Says MTB. Um, MTB. But if they want to learn oh, yeah. more about, I know you even have some YouTube videos out, right? Yeah, I've got it. Got, um, yeah, uh, um, yeah, you can find me on YouTube or Instagram is great. Yeah. You know, I, I'll, I'll always check, check Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. And I, are you still leading um, shop rides sometimes? I'm going to be starting that again soon. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah I'm, I know I'm it's going weird to be because of COVID, but. Yeah. I was moved. I was, I was just basing it out of one shop before, Absolute. But I want to start moving it around to different locations. Maybe the brewery or whatever. Yeah. Just different spots each week. So we can ride different. Because it's kind of. I, I get bored riding the same area. Yeah, all the you need time. to switch it up. You need to come to, to yeah. West Sedona. That will be great. Yeah, awesome. yeah I'm going to. Cool. Well, Simon, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know you're busy, and this was great. I know some you gave some really good tips on how to ride steeps. And, yeah, um, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Cool. I appreciate it tremendously, and I had an awesome time talking about things. Yeah, you're amazing, and we'll have to go out uh, and ride see. soon. I'll I'll be in contact with you. I'd love that. All right. Cheers.